So apart from 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 that, are there any other parts that you like really want to talk about that where you've had like a lot of great feedback or that you just really enjoyed? Like I'm trying to get some ideas of like the cool projects we've spoken of, like Netcat, um, Scapey, any, any any other examples? I, I, like web, web scraping is great. Any other examples? I mean, I, I can go to the chapter list, but that's a bit boring. Tell us about some yeah. of like the the cool projects that you that you've got in the book. I I think, and I'm pretty sure Justin will agree. The one on the GitHub Trojan is really, really cool. And what's contained in that chapter just has like some toy things you could put on a, let's say you've compromised a machine and you're putting this GitHub Trojan, putting a Trojan on the machine. You can configure it to do different jobs and put it in your GitHub repository, what the results of that of those jobs are. And so that is really cool. But some of the other chapters that come later could be also used with that Trojan, like the screenshotter or the key logger. Um, so you could build more abilities into that GitHub Trojan just by tagging on to the uh, succeeding chapters. Justin, what gave you the ideas for the chapters? Did you, is this based on like your experience or is this just stuff you were seeing? Because I mean, you're covering a whole bunch of stuff. Did you just try and cover as much as you could or is this like based on your experience? I think it was kind of a blend between things I had encountered on the job. So for example, I had been on penetration tests where, you know, firing up Netcat would alarm everything, but they left you a Python interpreter right? Uh, which made your security failure. So you, you'd have to write your own, right? Um, but also, I think being able to, for me, it was also, there was lots of stuff I had to teach myself as I wrote the book. And that was kind of by design so that um, I could mitigate and kind of manage some of the burnout you feel when you're writing. The GitHub Trojan was kind of this blend of both ideas and kind of I thought, you know, this would be fun. And but it wasn't something I had written prior to the book. It was something I had to, you know, learn and write as I went at the same time. So, yeah, I think it's it's kind of a blend between the two. There There's certainly things in there, even the volatility stuff, same kind of thing where uh, I was like, this is a terrible way to use volatility and I want to show people how to do it because it's you know generally not used in the way that I described it. Um, and so, yeah, it was partially me kind of having the idea and having a great publisher who was totally willing to say, yeah, you at some level don't know what you're doing with this chapter, but we believe that you'll figure it out. And that's one of the great, you know, one of the great features of having no starch is that their team understands how good security and good programming books are written. It's not all going to be inside of the chapter summary that you submit in your proposal. They know that there's a lot of freewheeling that uh, a good writer wants to be able to do and kind of do their own thing, right? Um, so yeah, that's the, it's kind of a blend. Yeah, I was just going to say about that particular chapter, Justin, they you pushed me. <laughs> that chapter had some really advanced stuff in it uh, to be able to load a Python library by kind of hacking into the, the module, uh, the Python module, what loads those modules. And you could actually load a module through to GitHub. So you could, load, you could write your own module, put it out on GitHub, and then have your program load it. And that was that took me a while to understand what you were doing. And then when I did, it was like, oh, gosh, this is really interesting. And I, I Googled around and tried to find other people doing it. I did find a little bit, but but not not very much. And so that was really creative. Um, so, yeah, that that was a really good chapter. And, and of course, if you were learning as you were writing, I certainly was, too. And the, the last chapter on volatility, you're right, using a defender's tool as an offensive uh, tool is pretty, pretty creative idea. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's the thing, right? I think that it's always fun to, and I guess I've always been known as a bit of a contrarian. So I always loved being able to uh, abuse tools used for defense and kind of giggle to myself as we use them on the offensive side, kind of on the pointy tip of the spear, right? Uh, that was always one of my favorite things, uh, favorite things to do. 